morning, everybody. Okay. We are live. <laughs> Good morning, Schwarzmeyer, Squiddy, Michael, Ryan. Welcome to another day of class. Where we get to stare at row operations and matrices and <sighs> celebrate that it's week 10 and we're on the downhill slope. <laughs> Got a new camera angle today, so hopefully it's not as weird and I don't disappear when I write on the screen. You guys were so chatty on Monday, which was good. I like when you guys are chatty. So how goes it? How's your guys' day? It's supposed to be up to 70 degree today, degrees today here in Buffalo, which is awesome. Part C of the program of is boggling my brain? <laughs> um, how so? It's just a system of equations. Completely understandable. Um, it's just a system of equations, but it's the most complicated system of equations you've seen thus far. Um, programming project. Okay, let me turn my music down. Three minutes, three minutes. Let's attack this a little bit. Um, so it's just a system of equations. So here we have our equations. Um, this creates, where are we? <laughs> there we go. That creates our B vector. The other side creates our A matrix. So think about um, W, n plus one, one. Think about those as your unknown. So think about this as x1 equals zero, x2 uh, minus x1 equals zero. Think about this as x m minus two minus four, x of m minus one, plus some constant uh, x of uh, x m minus four, x of m plus one plus x of m plus two equals some other constant, k2. And then this one would be x of m minus two minus x of m minus one plus x of m equals zero, and same thing. So these are just your unknowns. So if you think about it this way, you can write your system of equations, right? You can write your a uh, you write your A matrix at least. So your A matrix, one minute, uh, your A matrix, um, your coefficient one, and then a bunch of zeros, and then uh, negative one, one, bunch of zeros, etc. And then at the end, at the end, you're gonna have these numbers. So fill in this one, this one, this one, and this one. Those ones never change. Fill in the middle rows with this one. When you solve for x here, when you solve for x, if you uh, replace your um, unknowns, your w's with x's, essentially this is a column in w. It's the next column. So W looks like this. Our first and second columns come from that equation. Equation five. So equation five. Equation five. And then here's your first X and then your second X and then your third X and then your fourth X and then your fifth X. 
So that's your A matrix. Negative 30 seconds to explain B. Um, so B is just going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. This here determines what your inner values of B are going to be. Where these numbers come from your W. It comes from the previous rows. So this is the X that you solved for previously. And this is the X that you solved for two times ago. So the first time, this is W of N minus 1. And this is W of N. So you grab your values from inside of your matrix. So put your A matrix together first. Because A is, is the same, it never changes. And then your B value, your B value, essentially you're just taking these values and these values, smushing them together to create your B vector. No, 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 this is the programming project. Dan. This is the program project. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, a linear combination. A linear combination. This is a linear combination. Okay, so let's go ahead and <laughs> let's go ahead and start lecture because we're time to start lecture. Um. So we talked about we talked about thinking about systems of equations in different ways on uh, Monday. So given a system, we can solve for it using a couple different ways. We can use substitution, we can use elimination. We can also think about things uh, graphically. So we can think about our equations as lines or row vectors. And we can also think about them as a linear combination, which a linear combination is just a scalar times a vector plus a scalar times a vector. So C1, V1 plus C2, V2 plus C3, V3 plus dot, 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 dot equals some other vector, V5. So for your homework, you have C1X plus C2Y equals W, where you would plug in X, you would plug in Y, and plug in W. And then you just have a scalar times a vector, which we know is going to be the scalar times each number in our vector, plus scalar times another vector, which is that set scalar multiplied by each number in our vector. Add those two vectors together, and you get W. For the, for the purpose of um, systems of equations, it looks like this. This right here. Where it's the values in front of our first unknown create our first vector. This here is our scalar. We're solving for a single number of x. Our second vector here is the values in front of our second unknown, where y is our scalar. We're solving for one number of y equals this, our b vector. So if you multiplied this through, you would get 3x plus 2y equals 12, and 2x minus 2y equals negative 2, which is our original system of equations. Yeah. A lot of linear algebra is vocabulary. Like, you're like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. I just didn't know that's what a linear combination was. Um, so a lot of it's just vocabulary. So when we think about things as a linear combination, we're really thinking about things as vectors, where I can graph this first vector as 3, 2, this second vector as 2, negative 2. And then our x and y is essentially just scaling those vectors. So if x is 2, that means I'm just making this twice as long. If x is, or if y is 3, that means I'm making this 3 times as long. And then I can add my vectors together. Um, tip, tail to tip, tip to tail, whatever you call it. Uh, and you get your b vector. So here's my b vector. Um, Cupcake Panda. Um, type in the Discord or email me and I can give you the um, the link again. So I, I updated it, I think. I updated the document, I think, and sometimes that breaks the link for people. Yeah, so differential equations is essentially linear algebra. Um, if we go back to the project, these equations for... Da, 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 these equations are essentially derived from differential equations. So it's a different way to think about differential equations. So a lot of diff EQ, uh, when you have diff EQ, um, is a system of equations. You don't know that, though, until someone tells you, because linear algebra weaves its way, weaves its way into so many different things. Um, do we have to measure the length of vector 2 and multiply it by 3 and then add it to vector b? Um, you don't need to find the length. You can just graphically 
indicate. So if you're making this twice as long, you just extend it. You don't have to, you don't have to do any calculations for it. You can just eyeball it. This one, this one, sorry, this one. So you just eyeball it one, two, three, and then add them together. Okay, so uh, we introduced that idea. And then we talked about solving our systems equations using something called Gauss elimination with back substitution, which is really just a more beefed up version of the elimination method we've learned since our first algebra class. But instead of doing it with our equations, we're gonna do it in matrix form. So we write our equations in terms of our augmented matrix. I'll just start over. So we write our equations in terms of our augmented matrix. 2, 5, 3, negative 28, negative 5, 2, negative 1, 7, 4, 3, 2, negative 23. You guys should be comfortable with doing this back and forth. When you see an augmented matrix, you should also be seeing a system of equations. When you see something in, in, ro uh, in matrix form AX equals B, you should also be seeing your system of equations. You should also be seeing your augmented matrix. So you should be able to navigate between these two uh, ways of writing our system. And you'll get used to that as you go along. Yeah. And then what we're going to do, or what we did, is we did row operations. So there's three different row operations we can apply. We can multiply a row by a non-zero constant. We can swap two rows, so we can exchange two rows. And we can uh, do our elimination step, where we replace a row by adding it to some, um, some other row. <clears throat> so uh, I had a thought, and I lost it. But our goal is to get what's called REF, or row echelon form, um, where we get a lower triangle of zeros. So in order to do this, oh, I was going to say this. Uh, in general, I encourage you to not do row swapping unless you absolutely have to. And I'll explain when you might have to do row swapping. Um, I try to avoid it because I find that it's typically not necessary. It kind of gets you in circles. Um, so... The steps that I show you guys when I do this, it's the same steps every time. So I'm trying to show you the consistent steps, the algorithmic version, because if you know exactly what steps to do, you know what to do next. You don't have to sit there and, and think like, okay, what's the most optimal thing to do right now? Um, so just, just to, to let you know. Okay, so in order to get my lower triangle of zeros, I'm going to start in column one. I'm going to make this a zero and this a zero. And I'm going to do that using this two. So I'm going to say row two equals five, nope, wrong one. <laughs> two times row two plus five times row one. And there's multiple ways to show your steps. There's multiple ways to show your steps. Um, I am going to show you a, another method compared to what I did on Wednesday. So I'm going to do my multiplication over here on the side. So row one times five is ten. Uh, 25, 15, and then 28 times 5, and a handy dandy calculator, 28 times 5, 28 times 5 is 140. And then five, or 2 times row 2 is negative 10, 4, negative 2, and 17. So now I can add those two together. Row 1 does not change. So row 1 stays 2, 5, 3, negative 28. I use row one to eliminate this, to eliminate, to make a zero there, but it doesn't change. Row two now becomes 10 plus negative 10 or zero, 25 plus uh, four, which is 29, 15 plus negative two, which is 13, and then 14, I have a negative 140 uh, plus 14, which is negative 126. And then row three doesn't change, four, three, two, negative 23. Now I'm going to make this 4 a 0. And I'm going to do it using this 2. So it's going to be row 3 equals row 3 minus 2 times row 1. Once again, I'm going to do my multiplication over here on the side just to keep things straight. So 2 times row 1 is 4, 10, 6, uh, negative 52. Row 3 looks like this. 4, 3, 2, negative 23. Row 3 times 1. 
is that. So my answer is row one still doesn't change. It's still two, five, three, negative 28. Row two doesn't change. It's still zero, 29, 13, negative one, 26. Um, and then I'm going to have four minus four, which is zero. Three minus 10, which is negative seven. Two minus six, which is negative four. And then negative 23 minus negative 52, which is 33. So Benny, um, you at minimum need to show this. The thing with linear algebra is if you've noticed, I'm really only doing addition and subtraction or division and, and addition. So I'm, I'm really just doing that, but there's lots of different places that I'm doing. It's really basic mini steps, but all those mini steps can cause lots of errors. So like, I forgot my sign here. And I know I forgot my sign because I looked at my notes and I was like, wait, that number doesn't add up. So if you forgot a sign somewhere, it's really hard to figure out where you went wrong if you're not showing at least this amount of work. Also, when you show your work, you're telling us. Yeah, you're right, it is. Um, you're telling us that you know what you're doing. So the more work you show, the more locations you'll be able to see where you might made it, have made a mistake. Thank you, uh, DM. <laughs> I don't have that on my paper. I, I showed my work on my paper differently. So there's multiple ways to show my work. See, it's different, if you can see that. Um, um, so it's good to show your work because then you can figure out where your errors might be and you're showing us specifically that you know exactly what you're doing. Um, AP, if you coincidentally get a zero in another column, that's fine. If it's where you want it to be, then great. You did double duty for that row operation. So if I look at this spot here, this question here, uh, my next goal is to get a zero here. Let's say I ended up with a zero in this 29 here instead. I got a zero in another column. That's fine. That's great. It's, it's perfect. That means I'm probably, not always, but probably have one less row operation to do. In this instance, my last row operation would be to swap these. This is an instance where you might swap your rows. Where I have a zero here, I don't want it to be there. I want it to be below, so I would swap these. Um, so if you end up with another zero in another location that you want, that's great. That's just one less row operation you have to do. I didn't get a zero, though. I got a 29. Um, okay. Okay. So I've got my two zeros in column one. And once you've done with column one, move on to column two. For Gauss elimination, I want to make this a zero. So I'm going to replace row three by saying 29 times row three plus seven times row two. So once again, I'm going to show my work over on the side. Um, zero times seven is zero. 29 times seven is 203. I don't remember that number. 13 times 7 is 91. I remember that one. Uh, 126 times 7 is negative 882. I typed something incorrectly last time. Uh, then 29 times row 3 is 0, negative 203. Uh, 29 times 4 is negative 116, and 33 times 29, yes, is 957. So now my answer is here. Row 1 doesn't change. 0, 29, 13, negative 126. Uh, 0, 0 plus 0, negative 203 plus 203. Uh, 91 plus negative 116 minus 91. I get negative 25. Ooh, that's not a 2. And then 957 minus 882. Give me my, yep, 75. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I made an error this morning. So we're good. We're good today. So now I have my lower triangle of zeros. This is REF. This is where you stop for Gauss elimination. plus back substitution, plus BS. 
Notice this last row, we can say negative 25z equals 75. z is going to be negative 3. We can use that in order to solve for y using our second row. Use z and y in order to solve for x using our first row. So we can do Gauss elimination, stop when we have our lower triangle of zeros, and then be done. And solve for our unknowns using our new set of equations. Another technique, though, can be used where we just keep going. We keep going so that we have a lower triangle of zeros and an upper triangle of zeros. So let's keep going. I want to make a zero here. So a zero here looks like this. We are going to say that row one is going to be row doo -doo -doo -doo, um, 29 row one minus five times row two. So here's another way to show my work. Um, 29 times two. Should be easy to do in my head, but it's not. 58 minus zero, five times zero. Five times 29, 145 minus 145. And then three times 29, 87 minus five times 13, 65. And then 28 times 29, negative 812 minus five times negative 126, or negative 630. And notice row one, two doesn't change, row three doesn't change. So I can just write it like that and then solve over here. So I end up with 58 uh, 0 22 negative 182 and then row 2 is still 0 29 13 negative 126 and row 3 is still 0 0 uh, negative 25 negative 75. So now I've got zeros in my first row zeros in my first column, zeros in my second column. Now I want to put zeros in my third column. I want zero here, zero here. At any point in time, you can divide and clean up your matrix. So at any point in time, I could say that, oh, I'm just going to divide that by 2 and divide by this by negative 25. So I would get 29, 0, 11, negative 91. Row 2 didn't change. And this is 0, 0, 1, and then change that negative. That negative is not supposed to be there. That should be negative 3. So I just cleaned up my matrix a little bit, so I'm dealing with smaller numbers. At any point in time, you can do that. You can also do with fractions. In general, I try not to do fractions because it's just easier for me to write in whole numbers and think in whole numbers and type in whole numbers and all that fun stuff. Um, but we can always divide at any point in time, a single row, multiply by a fraction, um, divide by a constant, divide by a greatest common multiple, I think is what you call them, um, to kind of clean up our matrix and work with smaller numbers. Okay. So I've got my zeros in my first column, zeros in my second column, now I'm going to put zeros in my last column to get my upper triangle. I've got my lower triangle, now I'm getting my upper triangle. So I'm going to say that row 1 is going to be row 1 minus 11 row 3. So 0, 0, uh, 11, negative 33, 29, 0, 11, and negative 91. So I end up with 29, 0, minus 0, 11, minus 11, negative 91, minus 33, so 91. Negative 58. Now to get my zero here. I'm going to say row 2 equals row 2 minus 13 row 3. Um, uh, negative 126 minus, that's supposed to be zero, um, minus three times negative 13 gives me negative 87. 
There we go. I've got my lower triangle zeros, my upper triangle zeros. And then my last step is always to make these ones. So divide this by 29, divide this row by 29, and I end up with this. This form is called RREF. And this is what we want to end up with when we do Gauss-Jordan elimination. So REF here with our lower triangle of zeros is where we want to stop for Gauss elimination. Then we can write our system of equations and do back substitution to solve for our unknowns. If we keep going though, we want to continue and get into what's called RREF or reduced row echelon form. So here's Gauss Jordan. And notice if we write our new system of equations, it's really nice and simple. It gives us our solution. This says that 1x equals negative 2. This says that 1y equals negative 3. This says that 1z equals negative 3. So it gives us our answer. So with Gauss elimination, we want just a lower triangle of zeros. That's where we want to stop. Um, then we can do our equations and solve going back from the bottom to the top. For Gauss-Jordan elimination, we want to do row operations until we end up with, notice on this side is identity. We have our lower triangle of zeros, we have our upper triangle of zeros. And then we get ones along the diagonal. So for homework, uh, there's not that many problems for your homework um, for solving systems. It's usually like practice with one problem just because we don't want to overwhelm you. When you're studying for the exam, I encourage you guys to go over more examples. Um, for the homework, the main homework problem, you are asked to solve the system using Gauss elimination and then continue on for Gauss-Jordan elimination. If you're asked to... If you're asked to continue on, yes, absolutely. You can always stop at REF and then continue on to REF. It really just doesn't matter. The, what matters is the order in which you get your zeros. Start with your first column of zeros, then your second column of zeros, and then your third column, depending on where you're going to stop. But notice, you can stop at REF. Sorry, I have like hair all over the place. Uh, you can stop at REF and then continue on to RREF just depending on where you plan on going. Regardless, you should get the same answer. So you should get the same answer using Gauss elimination with back substitution as you do with Gauss-Jordan elimination. So make sure you know how to do both. Okay. Let's do another example. Well, okay, ne never mind. We're not doing another example in that traditional sense. Um, so Gauss elimination with back substitution, Gauss Jordan elimination. Uh, another thing, so there's multiple ways to solve our systems of equations. We can use substitution, we can use elimination, we can use Gauss elimination with back substitution, we can use Gauss Jordan el elimination. At the fundamental level, our solution for a system of equations is still x equals a inverse times b. That's the traditional way that we learned. 2, 3, negative 2. So if I have this system here, and I write it in matrix form, it looks like this. The solution is going to be a x equals a inverse b, or x equals a left divide b if we're doing MATLAB. When we had a 2 by 2 system, we could find a inverse as 1 over the determinant of a, times a adjoint matrix. We could do this directly. We could figure out what the determinant is. We could figure out what the adjoint matrix is. We will learn how to do this for matrices bigger than a two by two next week. This week though, we are going to find a inverse using a different method. And that method is just Gauss elimination with or Gauss-Jordan elimination. So when we wanna find the inverse for a matrix that is bigger than a two by two, what we can do is we can set up A 
And rather than putting B next to it to solve our system, we can put identity next to it. So 2, 3, negative 2, 2, 2, negative 4, negative 4, 0, 5. We can put identity next to it. And then what we do is we just do our row operations. We want to end up with identity over here. And then it turns out that we end up with our inverse after we go through all of our row operations. So let's go ahead and keep practicing Gauss elimination or Gauss Jordan elimination on this system. So my goal here is to put a zero here, here, and here for my lower triangle, and then here, here, and here for my upper triangle. Same thing I did previously. So I'm going to start in my first row, or my first column. I'm going to put a zero here and a zero here. So I'm going to say row two equals three times row one plus, nope, minus two times row two. I'll do it the other way around. Uh, two times row two, come on, minus three times row one. And I'm also going to say row 3 equals row 3 plus row 2. So notice I'm going to do these two row operations at a time. I'm going to do two, two at once. And the reason I can do that is because they are independent of each other. Row 1 isn't changing. I'm using row 1 for both row 2 and row 3, but row 1 doesn't change. I'm also not using row 2 to eliminate row 3. These are completely independent row operations. If you have independent row operations, feel free to do them two at a time. So when I do this, I'm going to end up with row one doesn't change. Row two now is going to be two times row two or six, four, zero, zero, two, zero. Minus three times row one or six, six, negative 12, what, three, zero, zero. Keep in mind, one of the big problems with um, using this method to find the identity is you have a lot of numbers to go across. Uh, a lot of times when I do these problems, I always forget to do everything over here for some odd obscure reason. I'm just like, oh, those problems don't matter. Or there's so many zeros, you just kind of forget. So make sure you are showing your work. Make sure you're showing all of your steps um, to remember to do everything all the way across. Okay, so row two is going to be six minus six or zero, four minus six or negative two, zero minus negative 12 or positive 12, one of those areas where you can mess up your signs, zero minus three or negative three, two minus zero or two, zero minus zero or zero. And then row three is going to be row three plus uh, row, row one. Sorry, row one. So negative two plus two, which is zero, negative four plus two, which is negative two, 5 plus negative 4 or 1, 0 plus 1 or 1, 0 plus 0 or 0, and 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 0 or, or 1. So notice after two row operations, this is starting to deviate from identity. We're good. It matches my notes. So here's two times row two. For this second, uh, for this second operation, it's just row three plus row one. Yeah, yeah. And this is one of those areas where, like, you look and you're like, wait a minute, okay, I think I did it right, or I think I didn't do it right. Like, I almost forgot to multiply this here, this one by three, when I was multiplying through right now, um, or earlier. So like there's there's a lot of little mistakes, little areas um, that you can have from mistakes. Yes. Yeah, so Benny, this is this is uh, we are augmenting with identity. So here on A we have identity instead of it being B. If we wanted to do Gauss elimination or Gauss Jordan elimination in order to solve the system directly, we would do A next to B, and then we would end up with identity with our answer. In order to find the inverse, though. 
And we're finding inverse using Gauss uh, Jordan. We're starting with A, augmented with identity, and we're going to do row operations to get identity, and then on this side it's going to be A inverse. I, I didn't do a very good job of explaining that. <laughs> but this is the process we're doing right now because we want to find A inverse. So if you're asked to find the inverse of a matrix, you set up your A next to identity, and then you perform Gauss elimination or Gauss-Jordan elimination so that you get identity on this side and then whatever shows up on this side will be the inverse. And I'll show you that as we keep going. There's lots of row operations in this, in this chapter. It's very essential you guys understand row operations. They will show up again uh, a couple different ways. <laughs> um, so it's very important that you guys understand this material. So, I've got my first column of zeros. Now I want my second column of zeros. I want to make this a zero and this a zero. I'm ignoring my upper and tri lower triangle matrix. I'm just, I just know exactly what I want to figure out. I want zeros here, I want zeros here, and then I eventually want zeros here and here. So I'm going to take row one and I'm going to replace row one by adding it to row two. I'm going to use this negative two to put my zeros here and here. Once again, you do not have to do that but I am showing you the same steps every time. Showing you the same steps every time. I know to put my zero here and here, I can always use this number. To put my zero here and here, I can always use this number. Unless it's a zero, then you're gonna have to do a one row swap, but you'll get more practice as you go along. Okay. So I'm gonna say row one equals row one plus row two, and then I'm gonna say row three equals row three minus row two. So, um, uh, 2 plus 0 is 2, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, negative 4 plus 12 is 8, 1 minus 3 or 1 plus negative 3 is negative 2, 0 plus 2 is 2, 0 plus 0 is 0. Row 2 doesn't change. And then row 3, row 3 minus row 2, so 0 minus 0, which is 0. Negative 2 minus negative 2 or 0. 1 minus 12, negative 11. 1 minus negative 3 or 4. 0 minus 2 or negative 2. 1 minus 0 or 1. Woohoo! Zeros in my first column, zeros in my second column. Now I want zeros in my third column. I'm going to clean up my matrix a little bit. I'm going to divide this first row by 2 just to make it smaller numbers. You don't have to. So I end up with 1, 0, 4, negative 1, 1, 0. That 3 ruins everything in this row. It'll work out, though. Okay, make these ones zeros. So I'm going to replace row 1 by saying row 1 equals... I'm using this negative 11 to do it. So negative 11, and I'll just pause 11. 11 times row 1 plus row 3. And then row 2 is going to be 11 times row 2 plus 4, no, 12 times row 3. This needs to be 4 times row 3. Here we go. 11 times one run, 11, 0, 44, negative 11, 11, 0. I'm showing another way to show your work. 4 times row 3, plus 0, plus 0, minus 44, uh, plus 16, plus negative 8, plus 4. So there's going to be my new row 1. My new row 2, 11 times row 2, 0, negative 22, 132, negative 33, 22, 0. Plus 12 times row 3, plus 0, plus 0, minus 132, plus 48, uh, minus 24, plus 12. Yes, so Flora, that's a really good question. That's a really good point. So Whenever you create zeros, whenever you want zeros to occur, so I want this 4 to be a 0, I need to make sure that I'm going to maintain this 0 here. If I use the 12, 
if I use the 12, it would give me a zero here, but it would give me like a three here or something like that. It would, it would undo that zero. So whenever you are choosing which numbers to use, make sure you're going to maintain the zeros where you want them to be. So make sure you mean that really you need to make sure you maintain the zeros in the columns before. So like I said, I'm showing you the steps that will work every time. I can always use this position here to make zeros here. I can always use this position here to make zeros here. I can always use this position here to make zeros here. Unless it's a zero, then you would do your row swaps. Or there's situations where we're going to see other alternative forms as well. These, these systems all have solutions. So this is the case. And then row three isn't going to change. Zero, zero, negative 11, four, negative two, one. So when I solve that out, I'm going to get up with 11, zero, zero, uh, five, three, four, whoop, whoop. Doing my math right. Uh, zero, negative 22, zero, uh, 15, negative two, 12, and then zero, zero, negative 11, four, negative two, and one. Like I said, I like to use whole numbers. When you're finding the inverse, you're probably not going to end up with whole numbers. Uh, so eventually you probably will run into fractions. Um, and so this is an instance where we're going to run into fractions, but it's our last step. So yeah, AP, so pretty much you're using the pivots to get zeros in that column. Absolutely. That is exactly, um, that is exactly the case. Okay, so my last step is to get my ones here. I want a one here, a one here, and one here. I'm going to divide this uh, row by 11, divide this row by negative 22, divide this row by negative 11. So when I do that, I end up with 1, 0, 0, 5 over 11, 3 over 11, 4 over 11, 0, 1, 0, uh, 15 over negative 22, uh, 1 over 11, and then 6, negative 6 over 11. 0, 0, 1. Uh, negative 4 over 11, 2 over 11, and negative 1 over 11. So notice this side now ended up as identity. And whatever we end up with this side is going to be A inverse. So if my original A looks like this, A inverse looks like this. I'm going to pull out a negative, a 1 over 22, just for simplicity. So 10, 6, 8, negative 15, 2, negative 12, uh, negative 8, 4, negative 2. So I pulled out my fraction, so I wrote it once. 1 over 22. So here's A inverse. Remember our formula for A inverse is 1 over the determinant of A times A adjoint. Note how it matches this. You should be able to write your final answer as some fraction times whole numbers. So this is a good indicator that the uh, determinant is 22. We're going to figure out how to find this directly um, using determinants and cofactors and fun things next week. But I just wanted to illustrate that. That and I don't feel like writing divided by 11 a million times. Yay! Here's A, here's A inverse. So we can use Gauss-Jordan elimination in order to find the inverse of a matrix. This is the long way to find the inverse of a matrix, I'm not gonna lie. But we can do it. It is possible. You can always confirm that you found the inverse by doing A times A inverse, by doing matrix multiplication. So you would just set it up 2, 2, negative 4, 3, 2, 0, negative 2, negative 4, 5, or A inverse times A. Both of them will work. And then 1 over 22 times 10, 6, 8, negative 15, 2, negative 12, negative 8, 4, negative 2. Lots of writing. 
If you do this multiplication, you should end up with identity. So matrix multiplication. Dot product between row one, column one. Uh, two times 10 plus negative, or two times negative 15 uh, plus negative four times eight. Divide that by 22. This should end up with one, and we do get one. You should end up with a zero here, zero here, zero, one, zero, 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 one. So you can always confirm it mathematically. You can always go to MATLAB as well using the inverse function. Once we have A inverse, then our solution is X equals A inverse times B. So we can do that multiplication. So one over 22. <sighs> so much writing. So there's my A inverse that I found using my calculations. My B matrix look like this. So now I can just do my multiplication. So eight times 10 plus six times negative one plus eight times 12. Divide that by 22. Uh, 15 times eight, negative 120 uh, minus two plus 144 divided by 22. Uh, and then negative 64 plus minus four plus 24 divided by 22. And I end up with negative one, one, and negative two. There you go, there's my solution. So once I have A inverse, I can multiply it by B, and I get X. Yay! So that's another way that we can solve our system of equations. Okay. Let me show you my fun stuff in Matlab again. So I showed you guys my Gauss elimination um, my Gauss elimination algorithm on Monday. So, uh, just to review it, um, I go through all of the rows, essentially, I'm going through all the rows, um, all the pivot locations. I'm checking to see if the pivot is a zero. If the pivot's a zero, then I need to swap my rows. So that's just kept checking if I need to do row swaps, this is when I would do it. And then just like AP mentioned here, I'm using my pivot my pivot in each column to create zeros in the in the in the rows below. Okay, for Gauss elimination, I'm only interested in a lower triangle of zeros. And then here's my Gauss substitution or my back substitution. So if I plug in an A matrix, there we go. Uh, nope, that's not my augmented matrix. I'll just type it in. Let's do it for my system that we just solved. 2, 2, negative 4, 8, 3, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, 5, negative 12. There we go. I can see my Gauss elimination and performing my steps. Put the 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here. If you have a three by three and you do those same steps every time, you really only need three row operations, one per zero. And we can see my answer. And here, uh, using back substitution, it gets the same answer that I got using A inverse B. Or using A, yeah, A inverse B. For Gauss-Jordan elimination, it's very similar, except I use my pivot. Where is it? Here's checking it once again to see if I have those zeros. Here, I'm using my pivot location in order to eliminate all of the, the, all the zeros in the entire column, except for that pivot location. And then here I divide by one. So if we look at this, um, this one, let's do it, use it to find A inverse. So uh, my A changes. That's a good question. Uh, the um, if final is not written. Um, so it's hard to say exactly what size. Um, it also depends on how the questions are phrased. You will have access to MATLAB for the final exam. Um, and so you might be told use MATLAB in order to solve a five by five. 
Um, so it just depends on how the questions are phrased. Um, generally, they're three by threes most of the time. Um, but if you see a four by four or a five by five, don't be scared. You might see those. Um, it's just how the question is phrased is it directly relates to how much writing you're gonna have to do. Okay, so here's A. Uh, if I do Gauss Jordan elimination, spelled correctly, we can see it goes through the steps. So this one, um, I use fractions for my Gauss elimination. I had fractions, I changed it so that it doesn't do fractions. This one has fractions. So you can see uh, how it goes through all my steps. It puts a zero here, then a zero here, then a zero here, then a zero here, and then a zero here, and then a zero here, and then it divides everything by um, the number in order to make sure I get once. So here is A inverse. And I can show all of my steps. I see all of my steps. I mean, if you if you want to do something like this in order to check your work, that's completely fine for the exam, for your homework. Um, it actually is kind of nice because um, then you can check if see if there's been little mistakes as you go along. However, you still need to identify what you're doing. You still need to show your work. You still need to show us on paper that you know what you're talking about. You know how to get this zero. You know what to add together, what to multiply by, everything by. But we can see here that as we get zeros over here, our matrix, our right-hand side is changing and slowly morphing into, uh, into A inverse. I can also, in order for, so there is no built-in MATLAB function for Gauss elimination with back substitution because there are multiple versions of row echelon form for a given matrix. However, if you do it right, there is only one version of our reduced row echelon form. So in MATLAB, there is an RREF function that you can use, that you can use that's gonna do Gauss-Jordan elimination for you. And you'll probably use this one quite a bit in order to check your answers. We will see it show up a couple times um, throughout the next couple weeks. Um, but RREF does the same thing as my Gauss-Jordan elimination algorithm that I wrote. Um, it just doesn't show all of your work. Doesn't show all the steps. Um, also, there are many Gauss Jordan elimination algorithms already out there online, so you can just Google one and write it yourself if you want. Um, but yeah, so here we can see that it matches what we got on paper. I can say that A inverse is whatever my answer is, um, all rows, columns, three, four through the end. So here's A inverse. Okay. I can also use the inverse function. So inverse A all rows one through three and check it that way as well. So there's multiple ways to check the inverse um, calculations. But once we have inverse, we can just multiply it A times B or A inverse times B and get our solution. Okay, that is all I have for today. I do wanna point out that there are um, more examples on UB Learns. I don't have any four by fours down. I will create four by fours. I thought I did, uh, but I don't. Um, I also will add in some videos that I created last year that go through solving um, systems. So, so here we can see for this week material, um, you've got these PDFs here that go through more examples. I try to show all of my work and illustrate what's happening. Um, like I said, I don't have any four by fours. I will add in some four by fours. It's gonna be a bear to create because these take so long to create, but they're nice and pretty. Um, so I'll create a four by four example. Um, I'm starting to add in additional examples from last year's recordings. Um, like I said, our, your final is pretty much gonna be linear algebra. It's not gonna be as straightforward as solve this system of equations using a specific method. Um, and there'll be some little nuances in there that you'll have to actually understand some of the theoretical material. Um, but there are examples here that you can use to practice. So I will add in more videos. So here's two from Gauss Elimination. I'll add in more. Um, so you should have plenty to choose from. Okay, so with that, that's all for today. Um, yeah, that's it. Any final questions? Okay, so with that, I will see you guys on next week. Next week! 
Woo! You got this. <laughs>